Greetings everyone, and today I'm back outside with another camera lens that's just too big to show you any other way. And also, when I last made a physical appearance in a video a few weeks ago, people seemed to really like it. I always thought that my appeal was solely based on having an accent so British it could colonise your computer. But anyway, this week I've had the pleasure of testing out one of Canon's newest, most desirable and also most expensive super telephoto lenses. The RF 400mm f2.8 LIS USM is basically their latest 400mm f2.8 lens for digital SLR cameras, except this time with a built-in RF mount adapter. So this version will only work for Canon's mirrorless EOS R system cameras. It wouldn't really have made much sense for Canon just to completely redesign the Air EF Mark III lens from the ground up for mirrorless cameras, as it was already quite new, and telephoto lenses don't really benefit much from the shorter flange distance of a mirrorless camera system. Having a built-in adapter means the lens fits slightly more securely onto your camera, and you're less at risk of losing your adapter if you're a bit clumsy like I am. And also the design allows you to use Canon's RF teleconverters, which you couldn't do before with the EF to RF mount adapter. In this review, I'll be testing Canon's 1.4x and 2x converters as well as the lens, so let's take a closer look. The lens costs £12,500 here in the UK, or when copies of it finally become readily available, or $12,000 in the US. I'd like to thank Canon UK for loaning me this lens and some teleconverters for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. This lens has port and wildlife photography written all over it. A bright 400mm lens is absolutely ideal for all kinds of sports photography, combining a long telephoto reach and a bright aperture of f2.8 for getting amazing subject isolation and fast shutter speeds to stop the action in all kinds of light condition. For example, these pictures taken in the relative darkness of the magic hour and stopping action with a fast shutter speed would require huge ISO levels on a lens with a darker aperture. The brightness of f2.8 also tends to help your camera's autofocus system to work a bit more efficiently. This is also one of the bread and butter lenses of many professional wildlife photographers. While it's not exactly compact and lightweight for easy transportation, the f2.8 aperture can be particularly useful for isolating your subject and for shooting in the dimmer morning and evening light, where wildlife activity is higher. 400mm can also be used for extreme portrait photography, if you don't mind having to shout instructions over to your subject. It can even be used for landscape photography, reaching into your landscapes to capture details you might never have thought to focus on. As I mentioned, Canon were also kind enough to let me borrow their RF mount teleconverters, which are sold separately. The 1.4x converter will turn the lens into a 560mm f4 optic, and the 2x teleconverter into an 800mm f5.6, and we'll see how they affect image quality later on in this video. The build quality of this lens is, as you'd expect, completely spectacular. Canon's older 400mm f2.8 lenses weighed over 5kg or nearly 12 pounds, making them a nightmare to carry around. This one weighs under 3kg or just over 6 pounds, which is an astonishing progression and, while it's not exactly lightweight still, it is at least hand holdable. You can see in this chart how they've done it over the years. Technological advances in glass materials means that Canon could shift those glass elements rearwards, where they can be smaller, which also contributes to the lens feeling less front heavy and a bit better balanced on your camera. Well, let's take a closer look at the lens itself now. As I mentioned, the lens is hand holdable, but using a good quality tripod will be advantageous if you don't have very strong arms. It is advertised as being extensively weather sealed, and so are the teleconverters if you choose to purchase them. The front and rear elements are fluorine coated, making them much easier to clean should anything get on them. There are a whole bunch of focus controls at the rear of the lens. You can switch it between autofocus, manual focus, and power focus mode. The power focus is for slow focusing during video work. Gently turn the focus preset ring in order to control it. 
You can also preset your focus, which some people find useful for wildlife photography, and you can control the manual focus speed too, if you like. Let's take a look at the lens's autofocus in action. As expected, it truly is lightning fast on my Canon EOS R5, and very accurate too. Occasionally the camera will send it going the wrong way though, but it quickly snaps back into the right place. Here, you can see it's just as fast with the 1.4x teleconverter attached, and the 2x teleconverter. That performance is just a dream come true, and shooting animals with the camera's eye autofocus detection mode was particularly awesome. There is the typical slot at the back for Canon's standard drop-in filters, and then comes the manual focus ring, which turns extremely smoothly and works electronically with the focus motor. As I mentioned, its speed is adjustable. As you can see here, the lens exhibits a little focus breathing, zooming in a little as you focus more closely. Just in front of that comes the spring-loaded focus preset ring. Turn it left or right to go to your focus presets if you've set them, or it can be used for the power focus feature too, as I mentioned. This lens of course has its own image stabilization. Here is some footage with it turned off and now turned on. On this RF mount version of the lens, Canon claim that the stabilization is marginally improved over the EF version if you're using a camera which has in-body image stabilization due to its direct coupling through the RF mount. But as you can see, along with the in-body image stabilization of my Canon EOS R5, it's working very, very nicely indeed, although it should work virtually as well with an unstabilized camera. You get the common three stabilization modes here, mode one for general use, mode two for panning, and mode three kicks the stabilizer in only when you take the shot, which can be useful if you're trying to follow an erratic subject. The lens comes with a generously sized hood, which is fairly lightweight and very expensive to replace if you break it, and the lens cap fits directly onto it. It's made of firmly padded nylon, and it's fairly quick to take on and off. Canon also make a shorter lens hood, the ET-155B, for if you're shooting in an area where space is limited. This lens does not have one of Canon's customizable control rings though, for adjusting your aperture or other settings. It does, however, come with a soft case for relatively easy transportation, which is fantastic to use. After my experience with the Sigma 200-500mm f2.8, I've come to loathe hard cases for lenses. Overall though, well, the quality is exactly what you'd expect here, as Canon have been revising and perfecting the design for this type of lens for many years now. Let's move on and look at image quality. I'll be testing the lens on my 45 megapixel Canon EOS R5 with its full frame sensor. In camera corrections are turned on for this test. At f2.8, well, you are getting £12,000 worth of image quality here quite easily. The lens is razor sharp with excellent contrast in the middle. And in the corners, just a whisker softer but still fantastic. Stop down to f4 and f5.6 for minuscule improvements that do lead to razor sharpness from corner to corner. The lens stays this sharp down to f16, where the effects of diffraction do begin to take a toll. Essentially though, you can't ask for much more than this, the image quality is simply awesome. Now let's stick the 1.4x RF mount teleconverter onto the lens, turning it into a 560mm f4 optic. At f4, in the middle of the image, sharpness and contrast take just the tiniest little hit, but they're still pretty fantastic. The corners, again, look just marginally softer, but are still very, very sharp, with good contrast. Nice. Once again, stop down to f5.6 or f8 for some very, very marginal improvements, but overall, Canon's latest 1.4x teleconverter is doing an excellent job here, and your images are virtually as sharp as they were without it, which is great. Alright, let's go the whole hog and fit the 2x teleconverter now, and turn this lens into an 800mm f5.6 optic. This should be interesting. Two times teleconverters do have a nasty habit of completely mangling the image quality of even the sharpest camera lenses. Well, we are finally seeing a noticeably softer image now with lower contrast, but picture quality is still perfectly decent here, really. 
Over in the corners, we are beginning to see just a slightly soft image, but again, the picture quality is still perfectly usable. Stop down to F8, and the corners look about the same. However, the middle of your images look just a little bit sharper than before, with slightly better contrast. Stop down to F11, and, well, there's no real difference in the middle or back in the corners. So, you can use the 2 times teleconverter if you like, and still get very decent results, which just goes to show how unbelievably sharp the base lens is by itself. If you stop down to f8, then you're probably getting just a little more detail out of the lens than if you cropped an image taken with the one4 times converter. Well, I hope you find that information useful. Now, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting. The following images are taken with in-camera corrections turned off. At 400mm and f2.8, there is barely any distortion, but some pretty noticeable vignetting is in the image corners. Stop down to f4 though, and it goes away very quickly. If we put the one4 times teleconverter on, then distortion remains negligible, but vignetting is still a bit strong at f4. Again, stop down to f5.6, and the corners brighten up quickly. And finally, here we have the 2 times teleconverter attached, but it's essentially the same story, just a touch of barrel distortion here, and notable vignetting at the new widest aperture of f5.6, which, when stopped down to f8, again, quickly brightens up. So, no serious problems from the lens here, no matter what you do with it, although you will want to leave peripheral illumination turned on in your camera at least for best results. The minimum focus distance of this lens is about 2.5 meters, so while it won't be mistaken for a macro lens, it gets you close enough for smaller subjects, like small birds. There are no problems at all with close-up image quality, even at f2.8, the lens is just as sharp as ever. When it comes to working against bright light, the lens's performance is beyond reproach here, especially considering the challenges presented by its enormous glass element. Very little flaring is visible here, even when bright lights are directly in the picture, so a really pleasant surprise. Now let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. At its brightest aperture, whether you are using a teleconverter or not, it is able to get you compressed, out-of-focus backgrounds virtually like no other lens in existence. Well, that is what £12,000 gets you. As you might expect on a lens like this, those out-of-focus backgrounds look spectacularly soft in all situations. I never saw a single problem with any of my sample photos. And that good performance includes longitudinal chromatic aberration. I'm not able to see any of it here, even at f2.8. Overall, well, you have got the picture by now. I've tested over 400 camera lenses on this channel, and this has been by far my favourite. It is simply the perfect lens, and there's no way I could possibly fault it. I loved having so much reach and being able to shoot at f2.8. That is fantastically useful for sports and wildlife photography, and the way its autofocus responded with my Canon EOS R5 was just magic. What was particularly nice was its very good performance even when teleconverters were attached. The 1.4 times converter was particularly enjoyable, making this a brilliantly sharp 560mm f4 lens. Adding to the versatility of the whole package, you would be a fool not to buy the teleconverter to go with this lens, I think. The price of it all is pretty horrifying, of course, but that shouldn't really surprise you. These lenses are exceptionally difficult instruments to design and develop, and to manufacture with precision. But big telephoto lenses like this tend to hold their value very well. You'll still be able to sell it on for a good price many years down the line. Well, if you've taken good care of it. For professional photographers who actually need what this lens is capable of, who have a £12,000 hole burning itself in their pockets, and gear acquisition syndrome, I simply cannot possibly recommend this incredible lens enough. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Testing lenses like this is a huge, huge pleasure, but it's also very challenging and time consuming. If you'd like to support this channel, then check out my link to my Patreon page down in the description below. There you'll find all kinds of exclusive content and videos for supporters. Ciao for now.